Scammers and scammers appeared when the first games for money appeared. They have always been a part of poker and other games of chance. So, for example, a player was recently caught who had been winning online poker at high stakes for seven years by cheating. But only a few become world famous cheaters. This is a story about one of the most legendary of them. On a scarlet cloak instead of bed linen, a young gypsy woman, exhausted by frequent pregnancies, ailments, and poor nutrition, gave birth to a boy, later named William. This unnoticed event happened in England in 1847. The nomadic way of life was habitual for the gypsies who settled on these lands. The mother, writhing in pain and endless fights, did not even think that the child in the future would become an unsurpassed gambler of the Wild West. William mastered the first skills of card cheating in childhood. His career could develop in two directions, horse stealing and card fraud. He chose the second, as he was physically weak. He especially practiced Monty's three-card game. It was as if she was created to deceive simpletons. The dealer showed three cards to the opponents in the game, shuffled them, playing them face down and offering to guess the ace. It seemed that the winnings were already in the pocket. But when the player pointed to the card, it was not an ace. Decoy people, acting at the same time with the dealer, imitated winnings, luring new victims into the network. A variety of tricks were launched. One of them was a double-sided card. The deft fingers of the swindlers left no chance of winning. The deceived left without a penny. When the guy was 20 years old, he went to Canada to hone his criminal skills. Here, William met the famous swindler Dick Cady, who became his mentor and teacher. Also, acquired a new name, Canada Bill. Traveling together around the country, they led people by the nose. One represented a decoy player who won big money, and the second, a dealer. Onlookers, thirsting for easy money, were drawn into the scam, remaining without a cent in their pocket. Such a successful activity of the cheater was facilitated by his artistic skills. He pretended to be a simpleton, and his appearance perfectly emphasized this image. Chipsy roots made themselves felt. He skillfully reincarnated as a pathetic beggar. Bill was a thin, lanky, and awkward guy. With a goofy appearance and a blissful smile on his lips, the swindler looked like a clown. The ridiculous image was complemented by clothes several sizes larger, bought in a cheap shop, and a thin boyish voice. People who saw him for the first time did not imagine that they were facing a skilled swindler. Much later, having reached the highest level of skill in his field, Bill uttered a phrase that has become a classic among gamblers, it is indecent to leave fools their money. When Jones became cramped in Canada and wanted vivid impressions and big profits, he went to the Mississippi River, parting with Dick. Vessels cruised along it, and in the elite casino clubs there was a big game. Teaming up with new comrades, George Devil, Tom Brown, and deceiving passengers on steamers, Jones hit a fabulous jackpot. Subsequently, his alliance with George proved to be strong, and they traded together until the Civil War. And the cause of the quarrel was George's attempt to deceive the colleague. But in the career of Jones there were unfortunate cases. Once he met the famous shooter Dick Hickok, who was also known as an honest player. He did not tolerate swindle, and two pulled out revolvers became an excellent argument in his favor. This case was described in the memoirs of a participant in those events, who lived to a ripe old age, George Devil. In them, he also named the exact amount of his earnings, $2 million, $56 million in terms of today. And the state of Canada bill was estimated many times more. It was huge money. Even now, the top poker players and poker stars earn less. The path of life led the cheater to the transcontinental railroad. The wealthy used the new mode of transport. They, fighting boredom on long trips, whiled away the time playing cards. It was a lucrative business for Jones. Fooling passengers in Omaha, Kansas, and Nebraska. The railroad later banned gambling. Bill's attempt to bribe the manager ended in failure. The company's reputation was a priority. While still quite young, the swindler earned so much money that he could retire and live comfortably in his house, having a wife and children and forgetting about the dark past. An adventurous nature and an easy way to make money took precedence over reason. He thought it would be like this forever. Cards have turned into passion, engulfing in the abyss. The game of Pharaoh was becoming popular all over the world, and Bill was drawn into it. Being a skillful deceiver, he could win, but luck left him, and he lost everything, to a single penny. Prosperity both came to him and left. By the end of his life, the sharper involuntarily turned into a simpleton, whose role he skillfully played all the years. Canada Bill Jones died at the Pennsylvania Charitable Hospital in 1880, at the age of 40, from tuberculosis, leaving not even a dime for his own funeral was interred at the expense of the state in donations from Chicago friends. The burial of the legendary gambler can still be found today at the cemetery of Charles Evans in the city of Reading.